and welcome to LiveWise Buy, Hold, Sell. My name's James Marley. I'm your host today, and I'm joined on this special income series episode of Buy, Hold, Sell by Charlie Viola from Pitcher Partners and Hugh Robertson from Centaur up on the Gold Coast. And today we're going exchange trading. We're talking about listed income generating funds, ETFs, and I'm going to start with you, Charlie. It's big, $9 billion, Vanguard Australian Shares Index, VAS is the code, buy, hold, or a sell. Oh, we're, we're probably a buy on this one, James. Good, simple ASX 300 exposure, 10 basis points of cost. Nothing to hate about this one. Uh, again, a good one for your portfolio. Stick it in there and let it generate revenue for you over time. It's big, it's cheap. Hugh, is it a buy for you? Buy, hold, or a sell on that? I'd have a hold. Uh, if I'm to take just the low cost option, I could go to a A200, which is 0.07. So a little bit cheaper uh, and it sticks to the top 200 whereas the Vanguard's are top 300. So, but again, Vanguard's a beautiful manager and we really like them. Uh, but in this case, I'd probably go down the A200 path. Okay, well, let's let's stick with a beautiful manager, but maybe with a little bit more yield. Vanguard's Australian shares high yield uh, ETF. The code is VHY, billion dollar market cap, three and a half percent yield, buy, hold or a sell. Uh, for me, it would be a, a buy for the income Chase the investor, uh, whereas the Australian share funds kind of 50-50 between income and growth. Uh, this one's about, you know, two thirds of it is income generative and 3% growth. So it can hit a lot of people's income goals while also keeping pace with inflation uh, and quarterly distribution. So really well run investment option. Charlie, are you blinded by the beauty of Vanguard's yield? Are you a buy, hold or sell? Oh, I think this might be the first time that Hugh and I have disagreed. No, I'm a sell on this one. Actually, I don't, I don't like it. Um, uh, we've actually held this in the past for clients and we really don't like it. And while it always says it hits its benchmarks, in reality, it comes up with some spurious kind of income derivative benchmark. And the yield has kind of been okay, but it's underperformed the, the general market for a really long period of time. If you'd just gone and held, you know, VAS or STW or just a normal A200 or A300, you would have actually done a fair bit better. Um, so we actually don't don't particularly like this one. The concentration risk has probably been too much to bear uh, over a, over a period of time. So now we're a screaming sell on this one, to be honest. Yeah. Um, Spider, one of the original ETF providers, their Australian select high dividend yield um, uh, ETF, SYI is the code, nearly 4.5% yield, buy, hold or a sell. Charlie? Yeah, we're a hold on this one, but only just, and only because it's probably just a little bit superior to VHY. Um, again, it comes up with some weird index to kind of match itself against. But, you know, if you look at the top holdings in this, Macquarie, Wes, Rio, BHP, Coles, APA Group, um, there's probably no aversion to holding this one. The yield is um, reasonably good. I think it's been touching on kind of 5% year in, year out. So if this is in your portfolio, it can sit there and it can keep putting cash in your bank account. Okay. SYI, Hugh, are you a buy, hold or a sell? We'd be a hold, uh, if not maybe even a sell. Similar to the picking between Vanguard and it, basically, uh, with Vanguard having the 1.9 billion, the Spider having 250 mil. Uh, but both, both have, I agree with Charlie's point on the, the indexes that they create, uh, and that, that is a, co a cause for investigation. Uh, so let's call that one a hold. Okay, moving on, another spider product. It's the Global Dividend Fund. Global Shares, not famous for their, for their income. WDIV is the code. Buy, hold, or sell, you. I've got it as a whole. Good dividend yield, good income, uh, considering it's a global fund. Cost is okay at half a percent, 350 mil. Semi-annual distributions, which is something for investors to consider. Uh, but I would hold it just as a diversifier of to get my access to global equities uh, because I don't want to go too top-heavy in Aussie equities. Okay, Charlie, buy, hold or sell on Spider's S&P Global Dividend Fund? Yeah, we're, we're probably the same as you here. We're, we're a hold here. So if it's in your portfolio, it's an okay one to keep. Um, it, it's punching out a reasonable yield given its global equities. It's providing that additional diversity uh, into global equities. And if you kind of look at the top sort of uh, 10 or 15 holdings there, um, you know, there's no offensive names in there. Um, you know, some of the distribution is capital. So um, if you are lucky enough to be paying tax in retirement, you're actually getting a little bit of benefit uh, from that because it is reasonably tax effective. Um, it's not one that we would rush out and buy, uh, only because we probably see global equities um, for, for a different purpose. But uh, if it's there, you might as well leave it and, and forget about it and, and keep you know, taking the income. 
in the case. This one we're talking about next is Charter Hall Long Whale Reef. And Charlie, I might put you on notice to give us a quick explainer around what's underneath this one because it's not your typical ETF. Um, so is this a, a buy, hold or sell the codes CLW for those people watching? Yeah, we're a big buy on this one. We actually like it. We use it a lot. We use it for most client portfolios. So the Charter Hall Long Whale Fund is as it sounds. Uh, it's a portfolio of really good quality um, uh, commercial, industrial, um, retail properties run by Charter Hall, which is obviously a, a, a massive fund manager in the property space. Long Whale just stands for weighted average lease expiry, which just means that all of the underlying buildings, when you average them out, have got long lease expiries, which means that the revenue production from that portfolio has got a good sense of kind of continuity to it. So we like the yield, we like the manager, we like the underlying assets. It's a massive, it's a massive fund. It's reasonable uh, in cost. It's a good one for, for virtually all, you know, all portfolios, but certainly those people who are seeking retirement income. Okay. Charlie's a bull on the long whale. Has it got a spot in your portfolio, Hugh? Buy, hold or a sell? It would be a buy from me as well. Uh, it's growing in size. Uh, the yield, great yield that the whale is 13.2 years. Uh, in the very well diversified, the one thing we would be uh, looking at is they did do around 1.4 billion in acquisitions last year. So just making sure that quality is still, still right, but a manager of Charter Hall's you know, reputation is is you know well above board and we can be quite comfortable with that as investment for our retirees. And to Charlie's point of that long-term leases can give you some certainty in income, especially during the volatility that we've been through in the last 18 to 24 months. So buy. Great stuff. All right, our final one for today, it's from the prolific ETF provider Beta Shares, who have been a great local success story. It's on their investment grade uh, corporate bond ETF. The code is CRED, C-R-E-D. Hugh, are you a buy, hold or sell on CRED? We're a buy. We've held it in our portfolios. Uh, we did dip out of it last year uh, when there was the market volatility. We were just worried what, what could happen with, with credit securities, but that, that it didn't happen, what, what could have happened. So it uh, did have some equity-like volatility, but it recovered really well. Low cost, good income, uh, paid monthly. So we would be a buy on that as a replacement, as an alternative to cash. Okay, it's a buy there. Charlie, final point for you, cred, buy, hold or sell? Yeah, we're a buy on this one as well, James, uh, for all the reasons that, uh, that he points out. You know, diverse array of, of investment grade bonds, a really simple way to do it. I think it costs 25 basis points, running yields 2.5%. Um, it's a, probably a little long duration, um, you know, for us, but in reality, if it's, if it's stuck in your portfolio and it's a bit set and forget, uh, it's okay. Um, but yeah, no, we're a buyer, we like it, and, and we certainly use it as well. Okay. Well, for all you viewers out there, there's our two experts giving us a view on six listed ways of getting some income exposure into your portfolio. A big thanks to Charlie and Hugh who have shared their views today on this special income series episode of Buy, Hold, Sell. Mm -hmm.